In the sacred scriptures, there are lots of wonderful lines, and today we hear two of my favorites. You duped me, O Lord, and I allowed myself to be duped. What a great line. This is Jeremiah speaking to our Lord. Remember that what had happened is Jeremiah had been called by God to go out and preach. Sounds like a pretty wonderful thing, doesn't it? If God were to infuse some knowledge into you today, asking you to go out and preach, it's like, hey, the Lord wants me to go, and what a, what a wonderful thing. And it is. But then God told Jeremiah what was going to happen. You have to go and preach, but they don't want to listen to it. They're not going to hear you but I'm going to make you like a wall of brass. I'm going to make you like a pillar of iron against, against the people and against the princes and the priests because they're going to fight against you. But don't worry, I'll be with you. Jeremiah then automatically assumes that this is all going to be just fine, piece of cake. Well, then we hear exactly what it is that Jeremiah has to do. And he says, I decided I'm just not even going to do this anymore. He said, I, I, I become the derision and a reproach to the people. It's exactly what God told him was going to happen. Did God dupe Jeremiah? No. Jeremiah duped himself. It's exactly what we heard about in the gospel. Understand right immediately before this passage that we heard in the gospel, Peter had just proclaimed to Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And then Jesus goes on to talk about the fact that he's going to go to Jerusalem. He's going to be turned over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they're going to, they're going to crucify him. Peter, who had just proclaimed him to be the Messiah and the Son of God, said, oh, no, 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 no. This cannot happen to you. Because Peter already had an idea in his mind of what the Messiah was supposed to be. And what Jesus just said didn't fit Peter's idea of the Messiah. Did God dupe Peter? No, Peter duped himself. He wanted to believe a certain way, and when what God showed him was different from what he was already believing, he didn't want to adjust to believe what God had to say. It's as we like to say in America, don't bother me with the facts, I've already made up my mind. I don't care what the truth is, I just want to be comfortable. I want to stay in my comfort zone. I don't want to be shaken out of that. To that, I will bring up another fantastic line that comes out of Scripture. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. What a fantastic line. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. What was your mind made for? The truth. St. Paul 2,000 years ago was saying, don't be conformed to this age. What do you think he would be screaming at us today if he were here today? All you have to do is think about the fact that six people, six people own every single major media outlet in the world. Six. That means there are six people that control absolutely everything that you hear. And we believe them. All that they do is lie. They are being paid to lie to you. 
but they said it on TV, it must be true. They said it on my favorite radio station, it must be true. No, it's not. Just look at a few things that have happened in the last couple of weeks. Do you really think that the fire in Hawaii was just a wildfire? What a bunch of hogwash. But it's what they want you to believe. Look at what's going on right now. We've got round two of COVID coming. The whole thing is a lie. The government sent out a notice to a number of agencies instructing them that they were all going to have to wear masks starting on whatever day. There's a university that put, sent out a note to its students telling them what, when school started, they would all have to be wearing masks. Now, think about this. They've known for a hundred years that masks don't do a thing. But because they use the media to cause fear in the people, we just go along with what they tell us to do. It was all lies. 100% all lies. The question is, do we want the truth? Now again, there was one point of truth that they actually spoke. Follow the science. But then they didn't do it. Remember Fauci stood up and said, I am science. Like talk about arrogant. You can tell the guy was educated by the Jesuits. But all he did was lie to you over and over and over and over and over again. And now they're coming up with the same lies. You need to put a mask back on. Look on the CDC website. They kind of messed it up for themselves just, what, two weeks ago? Or maybe it was a couple months ago. Remember the, all the wildfires up in Canada? Those were all purposely set. They weren't wildfires, but anyway. They were telling people they should put on masks to protect themselves from the smoke particles. And the CDC put out something that said, don't put a mask on for smoke particles, it's not gonna work. The, 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 the holes in the mask are, are way bigger than the smoke particles, the smoke particles will just go straight through them. Funny thing, but smoke particles are more than a hundred times larger than a virus. But somehow those masks were going to save you from a virus. What a bunch of trash. But now they're telling you to do it again. Just be prepared because it's coming. They did all kinds of scientific uh, uh, studies now. There are more than 100 studies that they've done in the last two years that show that masks do zero good. Zero. In fact, there are a number of studies now that show that wearing masks all the time make you sick. And some of the things in some of those masks are causing cancer to people. That's the science. But they're gonna do a few other things. They'll tell us to stand six feet apart, but there are a whole bunch of studies that have been done showing that standing six feet apart does absolutely zero good. And lockdowns? No, those didn't do any good either. In fact, they cause all kinds of problems. Emotional problems, mental problems for our kids, even intellectual problems because it set them back so far in their learning. But they're gonna try it again. So the question is, do we want the truth? Now I understand a little bit of Jeremiah because a couple of years ago, I gave a homily on that exact same thing. Not only did I get calls from the archbishop, I got letters from all around the nation and I didn't know that people could say some of the things that they were saying. 
Oh my goodness, the phone calls and the letters and so on. It was horrible. They didn't want the truth because they want to just live the lie. The question each one of us has to ask is, do I want the truth? If St. Paul is telling us that we have to be transformed by the renewal of our mind to discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect, do we want it? Because God is truth. And the sad thing for those of you who are my age and under, our entire life has been a lie. We don't want to hear that. Who wants to think that your entire life has been a lie? But it has, not your life per se, but all this garbage that they have been pushing down our throats for the last 60 years because they have an agenda. God made you for truth. You have to ask yourself, do I want that truth? Or do I want to be duped? Because Jesus told us exactly what's going to happen if we're going to follow him. But so many of us want to look at it a different way and say, oh, no, 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 no. If I follow Jesus, everything is wonderful. Nothing bad will ever happen. It's like, look at what happened to him. If you're going to follow him, you're going to follow him right up to Calvary to be crucified. Isn't that exactly what he told us in the gospel today? That if, we wanted, if we're going to follow him, we have to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him. Did he dupe us? Did he lie to us? Or have we duped ourselves? Because we're believing a different gospel than the one that was preached to us. When St. Paul was talking to the Galatians about that exact point, he said, anyone who preaches to you a gospel different than the one that we have given to you, let him be cursed because the gospel is the truth. But do we want it? Because sometimes the truth is hard. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's going to require that we make some changes in our lives. Do we really want to do that? Everyone needs to ask that question seriously to yourself. Do I want the truth? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Do you want the truth? If you do, then you need to come to Jesus. Shut off the stupid TV set. Shut off the radio. Listen to Jesus. Seek the truth. It's out there. You can look it up. You're not going to hear it on the mainstream media. That's a guarantee. So if you want the truth, it is there for you. And that's what St. Paul is asking us to do, to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. The renewal of our minds means to reject the lies and to accept the truth. This is scary stuff for us. But where we're going is going to get really, really scary. Because they want you to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid. If you're with the Lord, there's nothing to be afraid of. Be at peace. Be with Jesus. It's just that simple. But if you want to be focused on all this other stuff, yeah, you're going to get caught up in all the fear. And if you get caught up in the fear, you're not going to think rationally. You're just going to do what they tell you to do. So don't buy the lie. 
That's all I can do is plead with you, don't buy the lie anymore. You are made for the truth, and Jesus said the truth will set you free. So God has not duped us. In fact, all the things that are going on right now are right in Scripture. The Lord told us what was going to happen. And we're doing it to ourselves. God's not doing any of this. He's allowing us to do it to ourselves. We have duped ourselves. God didn't dupe us. So it's time to break out of the stupor and to be transformed by the renewal of our mind so that we don't conform ourselves to this age, but rather that we conform ourselves to the truth to the person of Jesus Christ, so that we can be free, so that we can be at peace, and so that we can know and live the truth.